A few years ago a meteorite hit a lighthouse by the sea. The site did not make a huge crater like other meteorites. Instead, it began to expand and spread like a bubble. Then a mysterious light curtain rose inside the lighthouse. All organic life within the shimmer's coverage mutated. Crocodiles with sharp teeth. Wild animals with flowers on their heads. Flowers and plants that take on human form. Unidentified genes have changed everything. And that includes humans. As the Shimmer's coverage grew, the government sent several drones and special forces into the Shimmer to investigate. But they all went without return. Lena's husband was one of the last people to enter the Shimmer. He hadn't been heard from in a year, just when she thought her husband must be dead inside. A man appeared at the bedroom door. Lena instantly became very excited. The man who appeared out of nowhere was her husband, Kane. Kane's answer to Lena's question was very ambiguous. He couldn't remember what had happened after he entered the shimmer. While they were talking, Kane suddenly felt sick. Then he started to vomit blood. Lena rushed to call an ambulance to take her husband to the hospital. But as soon as they got on the road, they were surrounded by police cars. The police stopped the ambulance and took Lena and Kane away by force. As the scene shifts, Kane is being treated. Lena is being interviewed by a psychologist. The psychologist, Drive, Ventress, didn't say much. She took Lena outside the hospital. To Lena's surprise, there was a colorful barrier not far from them. This barrier cut off the national park from the outside world. Lena now knew why the police had arrested her husband because her husband was the only one who came out of the barrier. But unfortunately, he was now bleeding to death. Drive, Ventress brought her here because she wanted Lena to join her team. They are going to re-enter the Shimmer and investigate the truth inside. The team is made up of women. They are Anya, a botanist, Shepard, a geographer, and Josie, a physicist. They recruited Lena because she was a biogeneticist. Lena eventually agreed to join the team because she wanted to know what was going on with Kane in there and because she felt a different kind of guilt about her husband. Six days later, a group of five women walked into the Shimmer's coverage area, but the first day they entered, they lost some of their memories. Judging by the amount of food consumed, they had been inside the Shimmer for three days, but none of them remembered anything that had happened in the past three days. What's worse is that the information recorded and the device could not be transmitted. Even the compass was out of order. Their goal was to collect data from the lighthouse, and the lighthouse was on the south side of the forest. In the end, they had to watch the sun to tell north from south. The group continued to head deeper into the forest. It didn't take them long to find a boat dog. The flowers outside the house were very bright and unusual. Lena took a closer look at the flowers and then noticed something. The plants were of the same species, but the flowers were of a different species. She analyzed that the plants were in some kind of mutation stage. Anya searched the house for a while and didn't find anything else. But while she was talking, she was suddenly dragged into the house by something. The crowd rushed into the house. They pulled Anya out of the water only after some efforts before they could calm down from the panic. A giant albino crocodile suddenly jumped out of the water and came straight for them. Luckily, Lena had been in the military before. She took her M16 rifle and shot the crocodile's head off with a burst of bullets. The huge crocodile was a bit unusual in shape. The crowd broke open the mouth of the crocodile and found its mouth actually grew sharp teeth. It seems that not only the plants have mutated, even the animals have begun to mutate. Finally, they found a small boat and started to cross the swamp. It didn't take them long to find a military base by the river. The group went to the cafeteria and found traces of the previous special forces. Drive. Ventress also found a video on the table left by the former for the latter. She opened it and saw the image of Kane. In the video, Kane is holding a dagger. He looks very nervous. Kane slashes a member of the team in the stomach with a dagger while being controlled by multiple people. And then a horrifying scene emerged that team members' intestines were writhing like worms. The scene scared them so much that they turned off the camera. They thought the soldiers were crazy. The soldiers were killing each other. But when they got to the location of the video, they really found the body of the soldier. It was a brightly colored painting made of fungus, but the frame of the fungus was a human being. The body had been split in two. The fungus had spread from the waist of the corpse in all directions. The mutated cells even crawled all over the wall. Lena noticed from the microscope the fungus did not harm the cells and do not release cancer. Instead, they mimic the original cells and keep replicating themselves. Lena told Drive, Ventress about it. While they were exchanging ideas, there was a sudden noise in the darkness. Lena immediately took out her night vision goggles and looked into the distance. All she saw was a gaping hole in the solid wire fence. It was as if some animal had broken in. 
The roar alerted the rest of the group. Everyone came down to check it out. That's when a monster suddenly bit Shepard's body and dragged her into the darkness. The crowd rushed out in pursuit, but Shepard's scream soon stopped. The next day, the group found Shepard's shoes in the grass. With a glimmer of hope, they split up and began searching for Shepard's whereabouts. During the search, Lena accidentally found two fawns. What frightened her was that the two fawns not only had the same posture, they also had flowers on their antlers. Finally, Lena found Shepard's body not far away. Shepard's body had been chewed up by a black bear. The team members were divided when they realized Shepard was dead. Anya and Josie believe that the closer they get to the lighthouse, the greater the danger. They should back off now. Just bring back what they know. But drive. Ventress is adamantly opposed. She told the group that she had to go into the lighthouse to find out what was going on. The group had no choice but to move on. They soon came to a former residential community. The strange phenomenon here was even more sobering. All the plants were covered with flowers of various colors, and they all grew into the shape of people. Anya thought that plants in nature could not grow in this shape because plants don't have human DNA. That's when she suddenly understood something. She thought the shimmer was like a prism. All of the biological genes in the shimmer are refracted. This includes animal DNA and human DNA. If they took the humanoid plants and sequenced them, they would definitely find human DNA in the plants. That means that all the genes are assimilated by other genes. At the end of the day, Josie looked at her wriggling fingerprints. She felt like her genes were changing, just like the soldiers they saw earlier. And Lena saw it. Lena also examined her blood under the microscope, and it turns out that her blood had changed, too. Her cells had begun to divide, and it was assimilating. In the middle of the night, Josie tied them all to chairs while they slept. Because she found out that Kane in the video was Lena's husband, she felt that Lena and Drive, Ventress were hiding something. While she was questioning Lena, they suddenly heard Shepard's cries for help from outside the house. The crowd was terrified. Lena says, isn't Shepard already dead? But how to explain the cry for help now? Did Lena deceive everyone? As the cries for help got closer and closer, Josie went out with her rifle, but then there was a gunshot. After that, there was no sound. Then a huge black bear came in. The bear's head had been decomposed. Its body had mutated. The reason the bear made the shepherd sound, it was because it had fused shepherd's DNA when it was eating her. The three of them were too scared to breathe in the face of the giant bear. Just as the bear was about to strike Anya, Josie rushed in with a gun. Although she was badly wounded, but she still shot the bear several times. The black bear, enraged, rushed forward and bit her to death. After the bear killed her, it started to attack Lena again. Luckily, Anya was able to break free. She eventually shot the bear and killed it. Josie's breakdown made drive. Ventress realize a problem. Several of them are shifting their thinking. To be precise, they were killing each other. She was still conscious now, so she had to get to the lighthouse right away to investigate. It's still light out. She put on her backpack and left alone. The next morning, Anya was staring at the humanoid plants in front of her. She finally knew why these plants looked like people. Because they were human, Anya's arms were sprouting at the moment. Anya told Lena that she wanted to stay here. Then she went off into the flowers alone. Lena rushed after her, but she went around a corner and Anya disappeared. A humanoid plant with flowers appeared in front of her after several hours of running. Lena finally reached the shoreline. The lighthouse was right in front of her. Whether for her husband or for her teammates, she had to go to the lighthouse to find out what was going on. The beach was littered with crystal-like crystals. There were many skeletons neatly laid out in front of the lighthouse. Maybe these are the bones of the special forces team members. She pushed open the door of the lighthouse. Lena found a hole in the ground. This hole was where the meteorite had fallen. There was a charred body leaning against the wall. Across from the body was a camera. When she opened the video she was completely shocked because the person who recorded the video was her husband. Kane. Kane was leaning against the wall talking about his physical changes. He had forgotten why he was here and whether his name was really Kane. Kane then pulls a white phosphorus bomb and prepares to set himself on fire. Before he died, Kane said one thing to the man in front of him. If you can get out of here, please go find Lena for me. The other person responded by saying I will. Suddenly there was a flash of bright lights. Then the other Kane appeared in front of the camera. No wonder the Kane Lena saw had forgotten everything. Because the real Kane was already dead here. The man who left here is just a replica of Kane. The mystery of everything may lie in this cave. Finally Lena climbed inside. Drive. Ventress was sitting in the cave and talking to herself. She felt that she had discovered the real secret of the cave. 
At this moment, she seemed to have a great energy inside her. Then a blinding colored light came out of her mouth. Drive, Ventress' body began to disintegrate into colored fragments. These colored fragments coalesced into a nebula-like substance. The nebula was in the form of a reflection. It was like a black hole that reflected and swallowed everything. Lena was attracted by the spectacle before her eyes and gradually lost her mind. Then a drop of blood was sucked out of the corner of her eye. The blood dripped into the nebula. The cells in the blood were immediately replicated into countless individuals. Eventually, the cells formed a humanoid creature. Lena sensed that something was wrong, so she rushed out of the hole and tried to escape. But the replica were already blocking her way out. Lena was so frightened that she stepped backwards. The clone followed her and did the same thing. When the clone knocked Lena down, she also fell to the ground. Finally the clone mutated into another Lena in front of Lena. Lena took advantage of the fact that she was still conscious. She pulled a white phosphorus bomb and put it in her hand. The heat from the white phosphorus shells ignited the clone's body. But she didn't run away. She didn't chase Lena either. Instead, she chose to return to the cave. Perhaps she had achieved her goal. Everything inside the cave was gradually engulfed in fire. And that included the lighthouse above. As the replicant died, the shimmer, which had enveloped the area, disappeared with it. Lena returned to life and was questioned by the expert. The expert asked her that you only had two weeks of food with you. But how did you manage to live in the shimmer for four months? There were some things Lena couldn't answer. Because she felt like she had only been there for a few days. The expert went on to ask where the rest of the team had gone. Lena replied that they were either dead or had disappeared. A few days later she saw Kane, who had regained consciousness. Lena didn't look at her husband with joy. Kane just looked at her with indifference. They looked as if they knew each other, but they didn't know who each other were. Lena said he was not Kane, and Kane was asking, are you Lena? Lena doesn't answer when she hears this answer. She and Kane are hugging each other. Lena's eyes are shining with a little glow. There is a lot of debate on the internet about whether the Lena who emerged from the shimmer was an alien or not, and whether she was lying or not are very controversial, but I think there is no standard ending for an open ending. So let's put aside the question of whether she's an alien or not for a while. Let's take a look at the main point of the film. Humans have evolved from monkeys climbing on trees to become the overlords of the earth. How do we deal with alien civilizations? If we think of the shimmer as the earth in the midst of a catastrophe, then the five women represent the evolution of all human beings. During this catastrophe, the human genes are constantly changing and reorganizing. Some met with misfortune in the middle, some people become another branch, until finally only the heroine evolved successfully. The emergence of this alien civilization for the entire human race is both a destruction, it is also a rebirth. The film also explores many things, marriage and family, self-awareness, and so on. You can subscribe and leave comments if you have any ideas. Thanks for watching. See you next time.